Yitzhak, so good to see you again. Good to see you, Max, again. <laughs> you and Ruben. Yes. Okay. So how are you doing? Great. Being back home for over two years is great. You know, my family, I have three kids, all married with Israelis. Though they were stationed in so many countries along with us, um, they are all in Israel, married with Israelis. And the two of them live next to us, like two minutes from home. Wonderful. And we have four granddaughters, very happy and satisfied. Fantastic. Yeah. Yofi. Yes. Uh, Israq, uh, it's been a while since you were uh, the ambassador in Sweden. You were for yes. a long time, five years. Five years. It's longer than the expected um, period, which is four years. When you arrived to Sweden or any other European capital, it is for four years. But in my case, it was prolonged for uh, the fifth one. And it was a difficult time from, uh, from the standpoint of uh, diplomacy uh, in, a, in a, can I say, hostile environment? Uh, well, hosti hostile. maybe hostile is, is one Little step to... Uh, too much, but yes, um, I would say unf unfriendly, challenging, ch unfriendly, challenging um, approach to Israel is quite uh, describing the the reality um, we have witnessed uh, along these five years. We enjoyed very much, very much Sweden and what it has to offer, and Stockholm especially. But from the professional point of view, for what I came to Sweden for, representing the state of Israel. It wasn't easy at all. It's a battle uphill to just have the possibility to express the Israeli official uh, point of view many times. Even this, the basic thing, you know, when you are criticized, you should be given the very basic possibility to express as a criticized, the criticized side in, uh, side in, in this conflict in Sweden, to express yourself. And the, it wasn't obvious at all. We had to uh, actually fight for the very basic possibility to, for the state of visit to express its official point, its official stand on, on issues that were very tangible and very discussed in, in the Swedish society and media. And um, my feeling was that we have achieved the, the, the possibility of getting there and at least expressing our views, which is the obvious in other places, in Sweden, even this openness for the criticized uh, party to express itself wasn't obvious. And I think today it's a little better. And I think that uh, there's a, a little more openness in the Swedish society to listen also to the Israeli side of, of the story and not uh, maintaining this traditional bias of uh, decades of the obvious. Uh, point out Israel this is the, the, the party to be blamed on whatever happens in between Palestinians and Israelis. But you were a very creative ambassador. You, you developed uh, the skill of communicating in a modern way, in a, in a digital way. Right. Uh, social media, uh, can you comment? Well, I'll tell you, as I've described, uh, I think that necessity brings innovation. The necessity was to have the breakthrough of having our opinion, our position uh, presented in the Swedish media to the uh, Swedish society so they'll know better what uh, Israel thinks about a, a certain issue dis discussed in, in Sweden at a certain time. Um, and I'm happy to have um, this possibility um, then, uh, obviously today, to use the social networks as a straightforward contact with the Swedish society uh, to express our views. And I think th that through uh, the usage of social networks, Facebook, Twitter and others, uh, we have reached audiences in Sweden that were not so much open to the Israeli issues. And I think we al also made stronger the few, not the many, very few, unfortunately, that were actually 
are knowledgeable enough to know what to say and to defend Israel, but felt lonely and um, unsure of, them, of themselves to do so. I think that in, in this growing numbers of people that uh, became aware to the Israeli uh, um, the concepts and positions and official stand, uh, we made those uh, a little louder, a little more comf uh, comfortable in their skin to go out and uh, say, yeah, I support Israel and uh, here are my explanations, okay? And I, I think that uh, this is an ongoing process, it continues. I'm, I'm very happy that it continues after I've left. I think we have created du during my five years the infrastructure of so many followers that continue to show interest. And my successor and this successor, when the time comes, I think would have this possibility to reach the Swedish people with our real positions. Uh, there were many times, there were not many times that I was asked by the Swedish media to give uh, interviews. Um, there were very few, including one time, as uh, I think uh, we all remember, when the Swedish radio was asked about uh, anti-Semitism with um, the question that uh, related to are Jews somehow also to be blamed for uh, the anti-Semitism against themselves, uh, which was a question that shouldn't have been asked. I remember and, um, you were yeah. very direct yeah, and, and tough. I, I felt that this is uh, something that uh, undermines the very basic notion of uh, when you are attacked, you are the victim. Yeah. Okay, and as, as a victim, you cannot contribute to the uh, uh, offensive approach of those that are attacking you. The perpetrators. The perpetrators are uh, uh, becoming here the party that is somehow justified yeah. in his behavior as a result of your behavior as a victim yeah. and and there's no way that this can be ex accepted and and I, I i i felt so strongly against it that it was an immediate approach that i reject this question yeah i remember and, and i think uh, uh this is a question that should be rejected time and again so how would you summarize your five years in swedish uh, in the swedish environment society well i think for us from the personal point of view for us not my wife and myself, we were very much involved in whatever, whatever was possible in Sweden. From the personal point of view, we felt that this is the best of places, really. And, you know, I was asked many times in Hebrew in Israel and many times in Swedish or in English in, in Sweden, and my answer was the same. I still give the same answer. My opinion about Sweden, that it, it is, um, you know, we, we don't know whether Actually, there is a paradise. We have no proof for that. But if there is such a thing, I would consider Sweden to be the corridor for paradise. Mm. I think that it is a great place with, that offers so much for uh, a country that offers so much for its citizens and does it with, with a style. And um, it's a clean, organized, systematic society and government with um, politicians that are very reliable, con considered to be reliable in their society, things that are, should be really admired. Uh, this is on, on one hand, and this is our uh, view today as well, uh, looking at it from a distance of uh, all, almost two and a half years. Um, but when it comes to um, uh, the challenges of uh, representing the state of Israel, it's, it's uh, a tough work. You go uphill and uh, you, you deal with uh, people that many times are coming with uh, very solid concepts on a conflict that apparently, and as somebody that knows the conflict inside out, I know that they are not basing their concepts on a true and um, real model of the Middle East, of a today model of the Middle East. It's an historic thing and it's not updated, and, and too often terrorism against Israel, hatred that is taught in schools by the Palestinians against Israel, and so on and so forth, are totally ignored, including by organizations that are present in, in, the, Swed in, the, in the territories, in Judea and Samaria, 
uh, sometimes in Gaza as well, and they know very well what is taught uh, to the kids and how the Palestinian society is describing Jews and Israel. And I think that this is basically the reason for the conflict. We, we have a party that is Israel, that is striving for peace, that is uh, teaching uh, the youngsters uh, of coexistence. And we have on the other side, uh, today, not only one party, but two. We have Gaza on one hand and uh, Ramallah on the other one. Um, in both cases, what they teach their kids is uh, hatred of Jews and how Israelis are terrible and how all this land of Israel, not only territories in Judea and Samaria, Jaffa and Haifa and uh, Ramla and Lod belong to the Palestinians. They send their kids to, to schools with, with the keys, a symbolic key of their grandparents or maybe grand-grandparents um, house in, in Israel to maintain this uh, desire to continue and fight Israel. And with this approach, when countries like Sweden, that is a very, uh, I think, responsible and serious uh, uh, country uh, with, with a great uh, international cooperation, uh, SIDA as, as a, an arm of um, assistance, um, should know better, should treat different, should uh, lead and push the Palestinians to teach other realistic and, uh, and uh, peaceful notions. When this goes on and, and is ignored by, by so many players, inclu including Sweden, that is one of the main players and uh, donating party to, to um, assist uh, the Palestinians, there's hardly any, any chance for peace because we, we, we continue being the uh, party to the conflict teaching uh, coexistence and on the other side we have politicians that try to describe uh, a peaceful approach but uh, practically and under this uh, empty declarations the, the practical policies, the education system, the media are so much anti-Israel and I'm sure that uh, many in Sweden especially those are that, are that are so biased against Israel, they know it firsthand because they have representatives, the, the Swedish church, the, the foreign ministry of, uh, of Sweden that has representatives in the consulate, they know what the reality on the ground is. Mm. So having said that, I hope that things would uh, become a little better and uh, Sweden would, would be more, or trying to be more balanced um, Sweden used to have a say in this conflict, and I, I, I'm unfortunately, I believe that uh, given the rift and the, and the uh, misunderstandings and the, the unpleasant situation between, diplomatically speaking, between both countries, uh, it lost its, this possibility. And I'm sure that uh, it's going to be instrumental for us and for Sweden as well to have such a party being able to go about um, peaceful and understanding uh, 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 in, be in between those two parties. Right now it seems that um, Sweden lost a lot of possibilities to um, be a sincere and honest uh, party to such a conflict uh, while uh, the, the, the declarations that were made against Israel are still up in the air and there's no correction of um, uh, or trial of correction from the Swedish uh, party um, towards Israel. The, part, the, the policies are continuing with uh, voting um, strongly against Israel in international uh, organizations and being critical to Israel. Sometimes there are slight and uh, you know uh, light at the end of the tunnel, like recently with the 100 uh, 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 mortars and shells and, uh, and uh, missiles that were launched last week um, against Israel from Gaza, there was a, a condemnation, a strong condemnation, Swedish condemnation by uh, the, the ambassador Magnus Elgren here in, 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 in Israel. This is uh, something that uh, contributes to, to the feeling that maybe there's a chance for better days
things are to, changing. To come. Yes. Yeah. So uh, it's two years since you left. Mm -hmm. Can you say something about what you're doing now? We're sitting it in, in your yeah. office in the foreign ministry of uh, Israel. Yes. In Jerusalem. Please uh, say something about yes. what, what your mission is now. You, you have mentioned uh, my work uh, in, in the media in, in um, uh, Sweden, during my five years in, in Sweden. Well, when I came back to Israel, uh, this work uh, uh, represented a kind of um, achievement that maybe can be translated into um, of the foreign policies, uh, the foreign ministry uh, um, work, routine work with other countries as well. And there was this new job that was created, a niche uh, that I am filling in, Ambassador Special Envoy for our di uh, Digital Diplomacy. And uh, we're trying to get deeper into this um, field and to uh, have um, a deeper possibility to reach a larger, as large uh, as possible audience in different country, countries to bring our notions and our ideas and our values to uh, social media uh, users worldwide. So this is what I'm involved in and I'm also in charge of some projects. Uh, uh, one of them was the voting overseas of uh, all Israeli um, representatives and all Israeli missions overseas, a very complicated and detailed uh, procedure that um, I finished uh, a few days ago. Okay, so uh, thank you for uh, taking your time and uh, we were very enthusiastic to see you again and uh, we hope to see you many more times whenever we are in Israel. Say hello to your lovely wife, Osnat, and uh, thank you very much. Shalom, Israel vänner. Jag heter Max Federman, representerar Karen Kajeme. Vi har en svår situation nu i Israel på grund av coronasmittan. Hjälp oss att hjälpa de fattiga, de äldre, de utsatta i Israel med matpaket. Vi behöver din hjälp. Tack. Hjälp de nödställda i Israel. Du kan swisha. Eller donera via Bankiro. Märk din gåva, Mathjälp. Varmt tack för din gåva.